Hey students, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use nested for loops in P5 to create a pattern of X's like you see here that go in columns and rows. It's really easy to do and really helpful to know how to do it. Let's get started. Okay, as you can see here, I've started a brand new sketch in P5. I'm going to go ahead and rename it nested for loops. And we'll keep the canvas at 400 by 400, which is the default. Let's go ahead and set the background color to zero and then create a fill. And hmm, we'll use a nice lime green. We'll also set the text size to 12. That's a fairly small font in P5. And the text font to a font like Courier. Now a comment for my nested for loop. The term nested means to have one for loop inside of another. Okay, let's get started with the for loops. We're going to say for and inside the parentheses create a variable. Let's create var x and give it the initial value of zero. You have to put a semicolon between each part of the for loop header. So next we're going to say while x is less than or equal to width, again that's the width of the canvas, and then we're going to make the variable x increase by, uh, by 10 each time we loop. So we're going to say while uh, our x gets x plus 10, and that's going to be how uh, we increment x each time we repeat the loop curly braces, and that's the first loop. Now, again, a nested loop means we're going to create another loop here inside this one. So now, for parentheses. Now, we can't use x as our variable. Again, we have to use another, another variable name, so we'll use y. Variable y gets 0, semicolon, while y is less than or equal to height. That's the height of the canvas. And we're going to also increase y by 10, so y gets y plus 10, and curly, curly braces for the inner loop as well. It can be helpful to look at a grid like this that has columns and rows. Think of the outer loop as controlling the x-axis position of these, of these uh, characters, and the inner loop controlling the y-axis position of these characters. That's why I've used x for the outer loop and y for the inner loop, and why the outer loop is controlled by the width of the canvas and the inner loop is going to span the height of the canvas. Now all we have to do here inside the uh, for loop is draw our letter that we want to appear on the screen. So we're going to draw an x, so that's the content of the text, and then we're going to go ahead and put the x counter from the outer loop and the y counter from the inner loop. And that's all we need to do. Let's go ahead and hit play. And just like that, we have a grid of rows and columns of this letter. And of course, you could change this uh, letter to be anything you want, put an asterisk in there, or we could uh, put uh, an O instead of an X, and we get it looking like that. Now, it's important, you can play around with these uh, variables a little bit. So how, how about instead of uh, positioning this character with x and y, why don't we substitute the number 100 for the x coordinate? And what we'll see is we're placing this uh, column of letters here 100 pixels over and then, go ahead and then moving them by the y-axis down the screen. If I did similarly, if I put the X back in here and change this Y to 100, you can guess it, we would have a row of O's here going across the screen, uh, not moving on the um, Y axis at all, but moving across on the X axis. And so that's why it is important that we have both loops, the outer and the inner loop. The outer loop is the X, the inner loop is the Y. And when they are both being used to print the character here, let's go back to the X character. When they're both being used to print this character, that's why we get both uh, the rows and the columns of the characters being printed on the screen. So there you go, nested for loops. 
The important thing to remember is the outer loop typically handles the X axis across the screen horizontally, and the inner loop typically handles the Y axis or the uh, vertical axis on the canvas. And um, you have to use both the X and Y values here inside the loop to control the positioning of your character. Now you can also use this technique to draw things on the screen, shapes and things like that in P5. I've just used a simple example of printing a letter on the screen. Hopefully this was helpful in understanding for loops and nested for loops and how they work. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.